Well, for more on the issue of Syria's chemical weapons, I'm joined now by Charles Blair, a senior fellow at the Federation of American Scientists. Charles, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Jane. Now, not all chemical weapons are lethal. Does sarin cross the red line? Yes. It's a Schedule I under the Chemical Weapons Convention. Uh, it is considered, uh, although Syria is not a member of the Chemical Weapons Convention, but it is, it, that would definitely be over the line. But there has been some suggestion that if there weren't mass casualties, then the president's calculus won't change. But you're saying legally, presumably, it's still a chemical weapon. Sarin, definitely. If there's incontrovertible evidence that that was used, that definitely crosses the red line. So incontrovertible evidence, how difficult is this actually going to be to verify? Extremely difficult. The level, the bar which the Obama administration needs to have to reach is almost impossibly high to reach. The, uh, the letter that they put out yesterday demonstrates that. There are varying levels of confidence within the intelligence community. They call on the UN to do more searching. They're very concerned about the chain of custody of the uh, physiological samples that were taken. So they're relying now on the UN. So far the UN has been denied access to the to the situation there. And the only way that the UN and the Organization for the Prohibition and the Chemical Weapons, the OPCW, which is a part of the team that will go there, is they have to physically go to the sites, uh, find uh, artillery, uh, tissue samples, hair samples, uh, soil samples, and maintain the chain of custody, go to their own labs, various labs, uh, uh, confirm the test, and then give it to the president. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen. And, and even if they are allowed in, I mean, how difficult will it be to even find the weapons once it's been determined that they may have been used? Well, the issue now, the, uh, the Syrians uh, counterintuitively actually asked the UN to come in because they were claiming that the rebels had done something. But they only wanted them to go to one site, and the UN said we want to go to all three sites. Uh, theoretically, if agents were used of any sort, uh, there would be evidence there. They could find it in, ar in artillery, they could find it in soil samples. It should be there. It's just a question of locating it. Um, what about Iraq? Um, people think of weapons of mass destruction. In that case, this specter must still be hanging over the administration when it makes its calculations over what to do in Syria. How easy would it be to make that same mistake again? Well, I, that's a great question, and I think that really is playing into the calculus of everyone. The U.S., it's pretty apparent, doesn't want to get involved in this. Um, and it doesn't want to get fooled. It doesn't want to make the wrong decision again. And that's why that, the bar that I said about uh, evidence is so high. It has to be incontrovertible. And so I think that, that specter that you mentioned really does loom large. Well, Charles Blair, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for having me.